Nikito and Wrestling, MJ Wrestling Shoots Family, Matt Royce here with another live stream tonight of Dark Side of the Ring. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dark Side of the Ring. Please allow me to be your eyes and ears for this broadcast. I'll be playing the audio live in the background and giving my expertise during the commercial break and any questions you guys may have about anything i have answers during the commercial break what's up guys garrett light king l moxley michael maroney so we're about to start momentarily here that's awesome maroney see you're going to surpass roman reigns one of these days bro just another year left right and you're going to surpass roman Mark my words, my friend. Mark my words. <laughs> so how's everyone doing tonight? We are live. For Dark Side of the Ring. And it's going to begin momentarily here. So I hope you guys are doing well. Great to see each and every one of you guys. Great to see each and every one of you guys. Okay, guys, we're about to begin the new episode of Dark Side of the Ring. What's up, Nell? Mommy? Well, she's going to come back. Mommy's going to come back. To the inner truth of what that means. There we go, about. guys. Dark Side of the Ring. And I think a lot of his addictions to alcohol and drugs grew out of the homophobia that he experienced in the world and in wrestling. He's a complete human being. You can go to online forums and talk about pro wrestling and they'll talk about the character that was Chris Cole. This is a real human being with his own demons. So that's ep we, the episode is ending. He, he was a really, really good uncle. You know, he would always bring us something when he would come to visit. Sometimes it might have just been a roll of toilet paper from a motel, but we were happy to get it from him because he was our uncle. So the last letter I got from him was 1991. I stopped drinking and drugging. I'm clean and sober the way I should have been. And from now on, Chris Cole is Some buried. Chuck Harris lives. I want to talk to you soon, and he signs off. Write well, keep well. Your your buddy, the legendary Chris Cole, aka Chuck Harris. Such is life. Here comes a new episode. Chris Adams, the inventor of the super kick. Gentlemen, Chris Adams. Here we go. Well, what about wrestling here? I find the wrestling here is a. Uh... A lot rougher, you know, kicking, uh, punching, a lot more, I guess you call it dirtiness, you know. A judo champion who came to America with the dream of becoming a star of the squared circle, Chris Adams captured lightning in a bottle. The star that Chris Adams got at World Class Championship Wrestling, because you got to realize, on that level that Chris Adams was here, you were a big star everywhere. The gentleman from England, Chris Adams. Chris was the perfect gentleman over there. With his athleticism, determination, and charm, Chris had all the tools to become a megastar. My dad in Dallas was an A-list celebrity. It was impossible to go anywhere. He had this thing with Steve Austin where he trained Steve. He was going to make it in wrestling. But behind the curtain, Chris's most challenging opponent was himself. Life got in his way a lot of times. Sometimes Chris probably got in his own way. When he get a drink, man, Chris just turned into a different person, man. He didn't give a damn about nobody or nothing. Basically looking for you to say something that upsets him. He was definitely a Jekyll and Hyde, from Jekyll to Hyde. I'm telling you, it was Jekyll and Hyde. But alcohol bought out something that destroyed him. One man with two personalities on a downward spiral. Chris got drunk got belligerent. He just started beating the hell out of me. Oh. It was a gun. We were friends. I was best man at his wedding. 
but it was a bad situation. It was a nightmare. Dark side of the ring. But yeah, I shipped out all prizes. I have tracking. I'll, I'll send you guys the tracking after the stream. Weighing in at 233 pounds from England, welcome Chris Adam. Okay, so these were in a storage unit that my dad had, and this is just an example. It's so amazing that you kept this stuff. I know, I keep everything. It was hard. It was still hard. I still mess up. You know, I still think about my dad every day. I'm Jade Adams, daughter of gentleman Chris Adams. When he was traveling, he would always write me notes, letters, always send me a birthday card, pour his heart out in it. Dear Jade, wow, how time flies. I miss you so much, Munchkin. Yep, you're still my Munchkin, even though you're nearly 14 and a beautiful young woman already. It seems that I've always been struggling trying to make it, and that before you know it, half of my life is over and I've missed out on so much. I really want to see you more often. Family is so important. I feel so guilty now. I think of all the things I have done in the past that have hurt people and often grieve about them every day. Anyway, I thought it was time that I told you my true feelings, and I hope that you will be able to forgive me. Love, Daddy. He didn't want these demons as much as none of us wanted them for him. I just think they ended up kind of catching up to him, but he was a great person and a loving person. And, you know, he's not here to defend himself, so I want to do that for him. <laughs> Long before anyone could imagine that his story would end in tragedy, Chris Adams was a spectacular performer who seemed destined for greatness. The American heavyweight champion, the gentleman from England, Chris Adams. I know Chris Adams very well. And he wanted to be the best he could be. I had to admire that about him. I'm Kevin Von Erich. I've been in the wrestling business for longer than I can count. Chris was one of the toughest guys I've ever known. He was really a master. He knew what he was doing in the ring. Chris had a special finishing move as a super kick, and he kicked like a horse. Super kick. A super kick that Kevin Roderick is on the floor. He invented his finishing move because when we discussed the match and how to get him over when he got here, he said, well, my finish is a super kick. You'll, you'll know it when you see it. When he threw the super kick for the finish, we were like, whoa. Hi, my name's David Manning, and I was a promoter, a booker, and a referee for World Class Championship Wrestling. When Chris did the super kick, as he would kick, he would also had a way where you really couldn't see it, but he would flap his leg, and it literally sounded like he just tore the opponent's head off. Mm. That was it. From there on, he was just climbing the mountain here at World Class. When Chris Adams got me from England, you know, I had them colors from over there in England and shit, man. Oh, they loved him. Oh, yeah, for sure. i tell you what the situation is, brother. Chris Adams, they went goofy. I'm Ice Man, and I used to wrestle with Chris Adams. This didn't give a damn. He was just tough. That dude brought this super kick, man, was unbelievable. There's a super kick. And he could do anything in that ring. He was a performer. Do you know anything about his judo background? I knew his brother had won judo in the Olympics. My brother and I, we were both introduced into judo very early age, and it was very much our life. I'm Neil Adams, Chris's younger brother, two times Olympic silver medalist in judo. Judo has been the backbone of our family um, for a very long time. And this is where my career as a professional wrestler really first began too, because I had 14 years of hardcore judo. Chris was a great fighter. Whatever he did, he wanted to be the best, you know. And I think he got to a, a stage where he knew he couldn't go all the way to Olympics and world championships, and so he kind of changed direction world of sport wrestling which was the british uh, wrestling group they approached him and uh, that's how it started well of course it was big daddy giant haystacks mick mcmanners and then black belt chris adams came into the fold his good looks helped but also, he was a showman and he could charm anybody. 
<laughs> he, he could, he could really turn it on. I was 19 and my friend and I was at the bar and he just walked straight up to me and said, my name is Chris Adams. My name is Jeannie Clark. I was the girlfriend of Chris Adams. I thought a very good looking guy, had really cute dimples. I said to my friend, he looks a little bit like Paul McCartney and gave me his phone number. I think I'd moved in with him within a month. Wow. Eager to glamorize and elevate his TV image, Chris recruits Jeannie to join his act. He came up with an idea that I would be his second. I was the girl that would come in between the rounds, and as in boxing, don't think that it had been done in wrestling before. I did think he may make a good star, but only up to a certain degree. Knowing his fame in England has a ceiling, Chris and Jeannie packed their bags for the City of Angels. After arriving in Los Angeles, about two or three months later, I became pregnant. I loved it, and I remember sunbathing a lot. Chris and I just sitting on the beach, just enjoying the sunshine. And then I remember Chris head turning a little bit. Beautiful girls on the beach. They were tanned in bikinis. You didn't see that in the UK. I knew he was looking at other women. Probably my first red flag, so something was going wrong. But because I was pregnant, I, I felt... Uh, not good enough. Settling into their new life, Jeannie learns that she is pregnant. And with Chris traveling for work, she's often left alone in Redondo Beach. I didn't see a lot of Chris. It was very difficult. I was very pregnant, and we didn't actually have a lot of money at that time. So Chris, he went to Mexico quite some time. I went back alone to the UK to give birth to Jade. And then finally Chris came back to the UK. He was happy, um, but he said we were gonna go back and that was how it was. With the family back together, Chris is eager to return to the US. But for Jeannie, the thrill is gone. He started to stop coming home. I think he was saying about different women. Oh. But I do recall the last straw was over New Year's because he said, you can't come with me, but if you cook and get champagne, um, we'll have a meal together when I get back. And I did do that. And uh... <laughs> give me a sec. He came home three days later. I did not want to share my boyfriend. And the relationship was over. But we remained amicable after the fact as friends, but I did not want a romantic relationship. Yeah, he just said he wanted me to come to Dallas. And we both looked after Jade. My mom and my dad were separated when I was a baby. So when I lived in Dallas, I saw him every weekend. Welcome to World Class Championship Wrestling. You're going to meet a newcomer from England, the former British Empire Champion, Chris Adams. Very glad to meet you, Chris. Welcome to Texas. Thank you. Well, at last I've made it to Texas. Based out of Dallas, Texas, World Class Championship Wrestling is one of the hottest and most popular wrestling companies in the world. When Chris came to the market here in Dallas, we had Iceman King Parsons here. We had three Von Ernst. We had the fabulous Freebirds. So you had to be exceptional to be able to draw the crowd and everything else to, to take one of those slots. It was on par with the Dallas Cowboys, and people loved it. It was incredible in this area especially. Hi, I'm James Beard. I've been in the wrestling business about 40 years. It's not an easy job, as you can tell. It gets kind of rough in there sometimes. Chris was incredibly athletic and then can move like a cat. 
with the kip ups and the dives and super kick. It's a super kick. He was on par with the, with the Von Erichs, really. If you're on par with the Von Erichs, you're pretty much godlike. A tremendous roar for Chris Adams, a gentleman from England. He had the charisma, he had the looks, and he was a good worker. But there was a way with Chris Adams that he could be from Jekyll to Hyde. Now, when you people see this, I just want you to see the fire and the wildness in my eyes. I'm going to tell you, professional wrestlers are usually ex-bullies from high school. Chris was like that, too. <laughs> in Dallas, when he first got in the territory, I would drive with him to the towns. And the guy got lost once. And we have a rule in World Class Europe the show an hour before the show. If you're not there, then there's problems. Well, Chris was late. He blamed it on the guy that was driving him. When I could piss Chris off, his eyes would shine red. Like a light was on him. And he choked him almost to death. Chris almost killed him. Because, well, Kev, some people are hard minus. I don't want him to do it again. That's the person that would get drunk. Wow. It scared a lot of people. Chris had gave off an aura like this guy's out of control. You know, he may hurt other people too. Wow, that's wild. Well, alcohol, alcohol plays a huge role in um, a lot of things, you know, and Chris Adams, no different. What's going on, everybody? Let's see, Moxley says Cody isn't a draw. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Garrett says Tony Khan's trying to take over YouTube. Yeah, work was fine, Rory. Last night I got home late. That's why I couldn't stream. Oh, the fam's doing well. Thanks, Rory. And yes, I shipped out all the prizes. Uh, I, I will provide tracking as well from WrestleMania. It's too bad Ray had a Relinquish her title? Rory, yeah, it's a shame. You having problems with YouTube? Yeah, Maroni, you picked the warrior. She did a... Canada did a Hulk Hogan. That's not going to work for me, brother. The streak ends. <laughs> Chris Adams, I, I don't know a lot about his work, honestly. I just know he's the creator of the Super Kick. Yeah, Garrett, like, uh, like I said, I don't, I don't know a lot about Chris Adams. However, he did have a lot of legendary matches with the Vaughn Ericks. So if I had to choose any of them, that would probably be the, up there. Yeah, Rory, I should be streaming Friday as well. I should be. And undisputed king of memorabilia, Rorito. He's officially retiring. I'm making it official since I won the global championship belt at WrestleMania. You got it, Rory. Biddy pops. It, it may maybe in the near future, maybe because those those are just coming out as well. Is Drew leaving? Where's he gonna go? Yeah, Poppy was exhausted watching WrestleMania, even from his bed. So WWE did not reach a deal with Stone Cold for Mania. You mean like for money? Wow, that's crazy. Cody's promo on Instagram. Well, so fans are already turning on Cody. He did it in two weeks. The fans are turning on him. Yeah, Cody better be careful, man. Yeah, because his promo was boring on Raw. 
Uh, I remember. Now established and world class, Chris's ambition is to be the star of the show. But in a company crowded with fan favorites, the path to stardom is to become a standout villain. Any territory you go in to where you got the promoter's sons, they're always going to be the top. Usually every week, the main event was always one of the Von Erics taking on whoever the heel was. We tied Chris up with Gino Hernandez. Gino and Chris actually had discussed it themselves. This was a way to shift to be the main event. Chris Adams and Kevin Von Erich ready to go against Jake the Snake Roberts and Gino Hernandez. It was a tag team match, and then Chris turned on Kevin during the match. A strange, strange turn of events. The next thing I know, uh, he is going to get Chris Haven in the Super Bowl. Got him over. He found Chris bad. Got with Gino, you know. It was a hell of a little team together, man. We're the dynamic duo. 1985 is going to be our year. They were good-looking guys. Great chemistry. They both were great on the mic. Yeah, well, we're real bad, right? We're yeah. bad to the bone. They'd come to the ring with a strut. They had a way to antagonize the fans. They were bad to the bone. Bruce and Gino were the team that was. We decided we want to make the best wrestling show we can. It was a feeling of let's beat what we did last time. Let's let's go wild out there. Business was booming. Crowd, shut out. Are you listening to me, man? Everywhere. They turned over 3,000 people away, man. He was happier because he, he was making more money. He had a, a red Corvette, nice condo. Chris Adams and Gino Hernandez. See you guys. Well, my dad lived on Lover's Lane, and Gino Hernandez lived in the same apartment complex. Everywhere they went, there was always people following them, you know, wanting to have a fun time. Teaming with Gino Hernandez has elevated Chris to the main event scene in world class. But along with the money and the fame, stardom introduces Chris to a new world of dangers and oh. temptations. San Antonio, after the match, we all went to the best wrestler up on the third floor, man. They had three rooms. They had two tables in each room. I'm talking about bricks cocaine. Bricks we, cocaine. Then the next room, they had pills and everything. They had a pyramid bill. Jack Daniels for the free birds. Then they had my champagne over there. You know what I'm saying? They said, and then they had a cop on each door. I said, I know. They doing all this dope and then these police out there. They getting a police officer a thousand bucks a piece, man. Police just turn their head, man. And women unbelievable. You get more pussy on accident than you did on purpose. You know I mean? <laughs> I'm just keeping it real, man. Chris and Gino outside of the ring was always a dangerous situation. It'd be like you lit a fuse. The question is, when's it going to explode? Oh. They were in the sports cars, we're in the fast cars, faster women, and fast life. I'm glad that they were good friends, but obviously, you know, it's sad, isn't it? You know, what what, what happened? Fernandez's real name is Charles Wolf, was only 29 years old. The popular wrestling star and badly decomposed body was discovered late last night at his home in Highland Park. He had apparently been dead for several days. Uh. On February 2nd, 1986, Gino Hernandez dies of what was ruled as a cocaine overdose. It blew me away, man. That blew me the f away. What has happened is a tragedy. He was a great competitor, one time American heavyweight champion, several times Texas heavyweight champion. When you talk about someone like Gino Hernandez, man who lived the life in the fast lane and loved the life in the fast lane. In the wake of Gino's death, Chris's use of drugs and alcohol begins to worry those closest to him. Sometimes he'd phone me and I'd know if he'd had too much to drink. I really worried about that. I said, you need to calm down if you can, brother. Chris was Chris until alcohol got involved. And then it was Chris the demon, and he would get mean, and he could get vicious. In Israel, it happened, and I'll never forget, I get a call from the local promoter there, and he's like, you got to get over here, you got to get over here. Chris got in an argument with the bartender, and he super kicked him in the side of the head, Ooh. and it knocked his eye out. Whoa. I mean, his eye literally came out. Whoa. Despite the escalation of Chris's drinking and bar fighting, he strikes up a new relationship with a woman named Tony Collins. There was always a bar we would stop at in Fort Worth that 
gave us free alcohol <laughs> for the publicity if we'd all come by there after the matches. And that's actually where he met Tony. One thing led to the other. They ended up getting married. It was fast. He loved her. I know that for a fact. Tony was my brother Chris's mom. I loved her. She was like a mother to me. She was absolutely amazing. I think my dad met his match with her for sure. My name is Chris Adams Jr. I am gentleman Chris Adams' son. My dad always said that she was a six foot four, four hundred pound man trapped in the body of a five two, hundred pound woman. She was very strong willed. She was very fierce, but also very kind and, and very loving. Within a year of meeting, Chris and Tony get married in Hawaii. But any hope that marriage might soften Chris's temper is quickly lost. We had had a show in the Caribbean, and uh, we are headed back. There was some kind of equipment malfunction on the plane. There was a delay for hours and hours. But ain't no air condition or uh, nothing. It's just hot. People sweating and shit. Hot. So they serving drinks. Chris, they drank until they took off. Now they're headed back. They're in the air. And after about two more drinks, they cut him off. They told him he couldn't have any more alcohol. I'm in my seat asleep, and uh, the stewardess comes back and shakes me awake and says, please, get your friend. He's pissed off. Chris Adam already lit now. He said, get out the way, bitch. And when he said, bitch, he said, wow, he slapped him. And he slapped it back. Wow. And that plane pilot reached in there and grabbed me and shook him and said, what's your problem? Chris's eyes were that red light that goes on his eye. Chris Adams had that co-pilot by the lapels of his coat, and his feet weren't even touching the ground. Oh. And Chris said, feel the power? And was pumping his head into his face. Whoa. And blood everywhere. If he wouldn't have had the alcohol, it would have never happened. It's just that Chris was just not Chris Adams anymore once he got intoxicated. Sometimes something like that's a wake-up call, but and Chris just continued to have problems. Oh, that's terrible. It's the same theme with almost every episode of Dark Side of the Ring. Drugs and alcohol. They play a huge factor. Okay, guys, let's see what are the comments you guys have here. go Rory asked would I have NXT join the draft this year yeah I would actually that would be a great idea that's great Maroney Maroney's birthday is in 13 days that's awesome bro or I haven't checked out the trivia you sent me yet but uh, I will. You emailed it to me, right? Moxley's officially retiring from trivia as well. <laughs> so Moxley only watches Raw and SmackDown. What's up, Everbless? Yes, I, I will do tougher trivia in the future, absolutely. Garrett asked, would I create a trivia no yeet title? I don't know, because it may be copyrighted, so I might not. I might have to do something else. Rory asks, Zane and Gable. I didn't watch the match, but I heard Gable turned heel. Was it a good match? Oh, so Raw didn't sell out in Montreal? That's crazy. So Cody is in the draw. Yeah, I think Gable will be a good heel, Rory. The modern day Ric Flair. Possibly uh, Charlotte Flair, honestly. Three dead wrestlers you start a wrestling company with. Andre Giant, 
Bruno Sammartino, and Owen Hart. Moxley thinks WWE is worse with Triple H in charge. Tyrant, yeah, I, I don't know, bro. I mean, that would be wild. Bret Hart merch for prizes. Maybe. I mean, it all depends. I'm not sure yet. Yeah, it's a possibility, though. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to start revealing the prizes for Backlash on SmackDown, just so you guys know. On a flight back from Puerto Rico, Chris Adams has put the future of his career in jeopardy. It's one of those kind of situations that when you start to sober up, you realize that the magnitude of your uh, mistake and what you've done wrong. And that was bad publicity for world class. It did go away. Chris ended up getting some prison time. Wow. I think that hurt his reputation a lot, which fans started finding out a little bit about that. This made national news. A wrestler headbutts pilot. We had a meeting at the office, and he told Chris, you know, I don't know what's going on with you, but you got to straighten up. He brought shame on us, no doubt. That's terrible. And I know that everybody enjoys a drink. Everybody likes that last drink. But you see, that's where the problem begins. I think you realized that you've got to change. You know, that um, I've, got to, I've got to get a hold of this and I've got to change it. With his dangerous reputation now hindering his career, Chris begins looking for new ways to capitalize on his fame. Chris was always kind of industrious and, and, and uh, looking for a way to make something outside the business. He used, I guess, that, that celebrity to kind of draw people into it. Hello, everybody. This is Gentleman Chris Adams here again to give you another update on my own personalized coaching class. We'll put you on your own course that lasts anything from nine months to two years. <laughs> I talked him into starting the wrestling school, which is for charm in the day. Hello, I'm Tom Lance, and I was very good friends with Chris Adams. One of our first students was, you know, Steve Williams, who became Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin. My name is not Steve Williams. It's Austin. Steve Austin. Don't forget it. What Chris did with Steve, you know, was uh, to teach him some of the basics, some of the fundamental principles of, of combat. You know the story on these two. Steve Austin, an individual off the street who came into the USWA Wrestling Academy. Chris immediately recognized the promise in this young blonde, helped him develop his body a little further. I give Chris credit. He did train Steve. While training Steve Austin, Chris introduces his new friend to an old flame. I want to bring down the sexiest girl in America, the gorgeous and lovely Jeannie. What relationship does he have with you? That's none of your business, Mark. What ended up happening was my dad put my mom and Steve together to do like an angle, and then they started dating. With his ex-girlfriend now dating his top student, Chris concocts an angle designed to put him back in the main event. Jeannie comes in as the ex, and she's uh, teaming with Steve Austin, and that turned into a pretty hot angle. You're jealous of Steve because he is a real man. My mom, my dad, my stepmom, and my stepdad all did an angle together, wrestling, and it was, yeah, it was wild. It was not your traditional job for your parents. <laughs> you know, and working with Chris, of course, I went through a school and I was his protege. Dude, I'd only been in the business for a few months. And I always remember, he was in control of our angle. Nobody was influencing what we did. Chris had the bottom line on that. So he was a very, very smart guy. But I'll tell you what, Austin, there's not room enough in Texas for you and I. The honest Chris directed every single part of that for me. He'd give me every line. I was to watch Joan Collins on Dynasty. Mourning the baby that she couldn't have. That is it, isn't it? Yes, you miserable bitch! And that was the idea of the character. Just remember, he is thinking about me. 
only in wrestling could you do something like that. And when the women wrestled, it was sometimes an all-out cat fight. Jeannie goes after Tony. Pulling your hair, scratching eyes, slapping each other across the face, getting the kendo sticks, slapping each other. Anything that they could do to hurt each other, it was nasty sometimes. Well, neither one of us knew how to wrestle. The interviews were my favorite part. I am far superior to you. I have royal blood in my veins. She was born on a shrimp boat. She's jealous of me. She said, I can't believe you said that about me. And I said, Chris, tell me to say it. Look, I'm sick and tired of you, girl. If you both don't back off, you're going to end up getting hurt. And even when you get along, you know there's going to be some kind of issues there that, that just don't jive together. You are my number one student. You even wear my boots to the ring. There were some issues with Steve and Chris. I think there was a little bit of Chris seeing this guy that's coming along. And he's really going to be a star. And I think Steve felt like he was probably being held back a little bit. There was some real, li real life uh, drama going on there, too. He is accompanied by Lady Blossom, BWCW. Lady Blossom, wow. I think he was jealous that we went to WCW. I suppose he was jealous of the money. As Steve and Jeannie make the jump to the big time with WCW, Chris, frustrated, turns back to the bottle to nurse his bruised ego. When he was sober, he was, you know, great. Um, he was dad, he was awesome, he was there. When he started drinking, it just kind of changed. I know my mom kind of told me that that's what it was like for her. When I was older, my mom would tell me they had an up and down roller coaster relationship. I think towards the beginning it was very good, and I think about halfway through it got pretty rocky. Man, just the, the screaming and the yelling, it was intense, especially if they both had been drinking or something like that. Chris had told me one time they're headed home from a show, they're in his Corvette, Tony's driving, Chris in a passenger seat, and a little boy, Chris Jr., was in the back. And he said that for some reason they were arguing and she had stopped on the interstate and a semi was coming and luckily it went around them and didn't hit them. If it would have hit them, none of them probably would have lived. Wow. And it angered him so much that that's when he got physical with her and it beat her up, you know, it messed her up. She had to have some facial surgery. Wow. I ain't cool with that shit. That's not cool. But I remember it wasn't until I was much older and she had shown me some of the pictures of her where that abuse had happened and she was in the hospital for a while. I couldn't believe it. And I, I say all these good things about Chris, but that's heinous. That's terrible. It's disgusting. I'm just now realizing how much stuff there was. I, I didn't put it all together, I guess. That's terrible. Yeah, it is terrible to do that to a woman. That's terrible. Okay, guys, let's see what other questions you guys have tonight. Let's see who we got here. What I think of Big Show's performance at WrestleMania 21, Garrett, was that the sumo match? If it was, I thought it was <laughs> it was very lackluster. Rory asked, what are the seven best things you saw at the shop during WrestleMania week? The pin set, the Philly cheesesteak title, the, the bell mini title. Yes. No. The uh, they had a they had a Stone Cold vest, leather vest signed by Stone Cold, but it was like thousands of dollars. Uh, let's see what else they had. They had an Undertaker hat with the autograph of the Undertaker. That was a thousand dollars. They had a Bret Hart jacket signed. That was a few thousand dollars, and let me see what else they had there. Um, 
and they had some exclusive um, helmets there signed by the wrestlers and pop figures autographed but you know they were all very top dollar like so expensive Thoughts of WWE wanting to bring in O.J. Simpson for the back lot brawl. I think that's a great idea. Top six managers on the mic of all time. Uh, Paul Heyman. Paul Bearer. Brotherly Love. Jimmy Hart. Bobby DeBrain Heenan. And... Ooh, if I had to pick one more... Paul Ellering. Yeah, it doesn't seem like Cody's a full-time champ. You're right, bro. Oxley. Shocking new load. Uh, I, I picked Vince. But as he Glory, out of all of those. His descent to the bottom will only get worse. She knew that it wasn't right for her, uh, that kind of lifestyle. I think she knew she needed to get out. She said, I had everything that I had with your dad. I had the big house. I had a Corvette. Everything that anybody could ever want. But I just felt so empty inside. Chris's reputation follows him to his next company, the struggling Global Wrestling Federation. After World Class, and then Global came in, and that was a pretty good run. Chris Adams against Rod the Bod. Rod Price, he and Chris were battling for the GWF title. Rod had long blonde hair and it was starting to thin out so he ended up getting a weave put in somehow they kind of sewed it in up there i don't know how it's all done but anyway chris knew about it we all knew about it and it was kind of off limits you know don't pull the hair well during this match chris because i think he probably thought it would just come right off that he jerked on it and instead of coming off it ripped off oh oh and blood went everywhere oh. i've never seen so much blood in a ring in my life oh they just covered i mean he, he didn't even finish the match he just left the ring we had to take him to the emergency room i'm almost sure it was like 200 stitches to, come, to get that all straightened oh. out chris did it on purpose yeah he did it on purpose yeah in 1997 chris finally gets the call from wcw at the time the most popular wrestling company in america I think when he got that opportunity to go to WCW, it, it was he was thinking, yeah, this is going to be the thing that restarts my career, and it didn't happen. WCW was a second chance for Chris, but the matches I saw, it almost looked like they were using him to get their next star over. Watch out, uh -oh. jump, slam, city. The gentleman Chris Adams was interrupting a cigarette break, and he paid for it. He was unhappy that he'd gone to WCW and was being used as a jobber. One, two, three. I remember him saying that he was working harder, you know, he worked hard and he was getting tired. I think he was getting discouraged about the whole thing, getting beat every night. I, I don't see how it couldn't affect someone being at the top like that and then very quickly, you know, if you don't stay on top of it, you don't change your angle, um, things are changing, it's going to happen, your, your career is going to dwindle. I can remember him talking about, I know I'm better than this guy and that guy, and, and, and he, he wasn't lying. He, he probably was. Uh, but, uh, you know, wrestling is not always fair. Other things were going on that were working against him. Why'd he get fired? A few too many drinks and got a DWI and they let him go. Uh, he was always struggling with finances. His status had diminished to a point to where he wasn't, he wasn't the guy you wanted to go to. He was getting a little older, um, harder to stay in shape, and, and people just weren't coming to him like they used to. He got into some other stuff besides alcohol. Uh, got into GHB real bad. Basically, when you do GHB, if you do too much of it, you're just comatose. I don't know why anybody would want to do it. GHB was pretty popular in, in the day. Everybody kind of done it. It started off for bodybuilders. If you're sore and stuff, to help you work out, but I know it help you relax, and some also would call it the love drug, too. There's a fine line of how much you can take and it's a very dangerous drug <laughs> broke unable to find work and desperate for somewhere to live chris moves in with a friend of tom lance 
a local wrestling fan known as Boo Ray. Chris was going through some tough times. Boo Ray had his place. Chris was needed kind of somewhere to stay and all that. So I introduced him. Wasn't for Boo Ray, I don't know what Chris would have done. Super good guy, cared about people, went above and beyond. That's why he was helping Chris. Chris was lost. But I loved Chris, you know, he's my friend. Chris was really a nice guy. He was witty, he was fun, you know, to be around. I'm Boo Ray, and Chris and I were good friends. He was a good enough friend that I trusted him in my house. He, he was really a delightful guy. We'd invite people over and cook out by the swimming pool, and we were having a good time. Well, I mean, they seemed to be getting along great, him and Boo Ray. Boo Ray paid the bills. He had no money. He might work one little show here and there, and it was hard for me to take money from somebody that hadn't made money in, you know, three months. I was happy to help him, but also inside I was feeling I was being used. While living with Boo Ray, Chris meets a young woman named Linda. He was in love with Linda. I know he was in love with her. They didn't know each other all that long either. But they were, oh God, they got along so good. She was an angel, you know. So witty and funny, she was just perfect. She seemed like very mature, very stable. I can see how Chris would find some solace in that because I think that's what he was seeking. On the night of April 22nd, 2000, after dating for just a few weeks, Chris brings Linda back to Boo Ray's house to keep the party going into the early morning. They'd been out all night. They were having a good time dancing, you know? And I said, you know what, three's a crowd. I'm going to bed. Chris told me this uh, the next day that they went on and got that little bit of GHB and got two small glasses and, and just split it. I had warned Chris way before this that I did not want that GHB in the house. You know, I didn't care what else he had. That was his business. The silence, I guess, woke me up at about four in the morning. I came in and they were both passed out. Chris was slumped over a chair and Linda was on her back on the floor. I was trying to wake him up and I couldn't wake him up. Linda's lungs started kind of wheezing. And uh, that's when I called Tom. He was scared to call 911 because he knew Chris would get pissed. And I was like, I don't give a f call 911. They're not breathing. That's terrible. Drugs, drugs and alcohol, guys. Do not a good combination. I don't recommend it. What's up, Danny? Why think of SmackDown being held in France, Saudi Arabia, and Germany and Scotland for the year? Mox, I think it's a huge opportunity for them. Yeah, it's going to be a new women's world champ. Uh, it might be Liv Morgan that wins, Moxley. Uh, yeah, I might start doing mystery prizes. I might. <laughs> yeah, Moxley, we don't know the details of their relationship. I mean, you never know. Cody versus The Rock at Crown Jewel 2024 for the championship will end up being The Rock versus Eric Rowan for the title. That would be funny. Yeah, I don't think Triple H created the Bud line. I don't think he did. Yeah, this new era, yeah, I mean, uh, well, thin, they want to be thin. And they try not to be on roids, you know. They try not to get, be that big. Ah, uh, maybe, Rory, maybe. What's up, Z? Sumo match. Yeah, see, I remember. Yeah, Brock, he would, he would smash Druganoff. 
Garrett says top five Roddy Piper matches. Uh, Roddy Piper versus Bret Hart for the Intercontinental title. Was it SummerSlam? 91 maybe? I'm not sure, but... Uh, uh, Roddy Piper, main event, WrestleMania 1, tag match. Uh, Roddy Piper versus Goldust at WrestleMania 12. That was, that was ahead of its time, far ahead of its time. Uh, what else? Hmm. Roddy Piper versus Hogan. Uh, it's, I'm trying to think which pay per view in WCW. Was it Halloween Havoc 96, maybe? And uh, Roddy Piper. Let's see. Trying to think of another good match he was in. Hmm. I'll have to come back to that one, Garrett. Z, yes, the new tag belts look pretty good. Z, who do I think should win the Money in the Bank this year? Sami Zayn and... And Tiffy. To find Chris Adams and Chris's girlfriend, Linda, unresponsive. The paramedics got there, and I stayed on the phone with him, me and my wife. They're trying to evacuate Chris, and then they're working on Linda, and I hear them say, flatline. Uh, and I was like, terrible. we're ready. Did I just hear flatline? Because we know what that meant. Yeah, terrible. It's not the easiest thing in the world to talk about this. <clears throat> but she, uh, from seeing somebody that was just one of the sweetest people in the world die right in front of your arms, you know, uh, is it Chris's fault that this happened? In my opinion, yes. He was careless. I never saw him use drugs. He just told me the truth that he gave Linda, you know, too much of this GHB and she died and he was absolutely devastated. Several months later, they charged him with manslaughter. I think he definitely felt responsible for it. He was torn up about it. I mean, he legitimately torn down about what happened. After Linda died, he was going through a lot of ups and downs. You know, he threatened suicide and this and that, drinking a lot. His drinking had spiraled really bad. That would have been self-medicating. I think he was just totally freaking out, wondering if he was going to get out of the manslaughter charge and going from making money to no money. You know, he was miserable inside. I kind of got away from him. Really didn't want to be involved that much. And there's times when you wonder if maybe if I'd reached out, maybe it could have talked to him. I don't know. I, I doubt it, really, to be honest with you. I don't know how you can talk somebody out of that hole. I really don't. It's, you know, very obvious my dad had an issue with, you know, drugs and alcohol. And I just wish that someone had stepped in and said, hey, Chris, you're, you're doing too much. I think if it had happened today, I think he might still be alive. October the 7th, it was at my mother's house. Chris had called me earlier that morning and told me he was all bummed out. I just said, why don't you come on over? Finally, about 7, he showed up, and I had brandy. Of course, we had beer. And I'm still not sure what set him off. I, I must have said, you know, Chris, could you hold it down a little bit? My mother's trying to sleep. But anyway, boy, that's when he went. Berserk. I mean, just like boom, light switch. And he come at me with that post. 
I had a four post bed and he broke the post off uh. and come at me with it. Mm. I grabbed the post which cracked my index finger and then he put me in a sleeper hold and then here we go across the room. He pushed me on a bed and he just started gouging my eyes out. Ooh. And he started biting me. He bit me on the face several times and then on the neck. He had me pinned down and was choking me. And he just kept getting stronger. His eyes seemed to glow. I thought I was gonna die. I kept a gun on my end table. I put the gun as quick as I could to his shoulder. The only thing I could do was pull the trigger. Oh, he shot him. He shot him. At least he didn't kill him. This guy this guy's some wild man. Chris Adams. That's right, Z. Yep. Drugs are bad. Drugs are bad. Yeah, Roy, the new tag belts, they I like the design. They they look great. They look a lot better than they did. Piper versus Flair, the U.S. title, 1980. Oh, nice, Danny. Top three Bret Hart matches. Uh, Bret versus Owen, WrestleMania 10. Uh, Bret versus Steve Austin, WrestleMania 13. And Bret versus Shawn Michaels, Iron Man match, WrestleMania 12. Danny says, Piper versus Snooka, Coconut Head. <laughs> Garrett agrees that Tiffy should win the Women's Money in the Bank this year. Piper versus Valentine, the ear incident, Danny says. Okay. Rory, uh read much i actually don't read as much as i used to because when i was going to, to college yeah i kind of got burnt out reading so i haven't read uh anything recently three tag team names you would put as name for you and boots uh pumped up at for like we're here to pump you up so pumped up um Brooklyn Brooklyn Knights Sensational Sherry is uh next week Dark Side of the Ring and uh Mighty Vikings. New episode next Tuesday at 10. Wow, Sensational Sherry next week's going to be big. He went crazy. It was like he turned into an animal. And when I pulled the trigger, he jumped a little bit, enough to hit his heart. I was wondering, maybe wound him to where he'd, you know, get some sense. It's hard to make decisions like that when you don't have much time to make them. He would have killed me. I called 911. Asked him, please get here quick. It was bad. I remember that day very vividly. I was in school. My mom came to pick me up. We get home, and I remember her getting down on her knees in front of me. Honey, I'm so sorry to, to say, but uh, your, your dad's dead. And uh, I didn't feel anything at the moment because uh, I thought, no, 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 no way. I get a call from my wife and uh, she could hardly draw breath and then um, said he's gone. Chris had been shot and... That's how he died? I was, um, I just to say I was stunned is, a, is an understatement. I just sat down so on he the killed floor him? and I was uh, in total shock. I was 19 when my dad died. 
it was killed them. Like, very surreal. I mean, and that was the first experience I'd ever really had with like a profound grief because it was my dad. So it was really tough. Like it took me a really long time to cope with it. The funeral, it was packed. You had ex-wrestlers that were there. You had family that came all the way from the UK. And yeah, there was like people standing out the back because there were so many wrestling fans there. It was a nice tribute. He had affected so many people's lives and a lot of it was for the better. And I just remember being very solemn when I was there, but hearing a lot of the words that people said were really cool. A lot of people loved him. I pulled the trigger. I'm sad, but I wouldn't be sitting here right now had I not. I had to go in front of the grand jury. They said, it's over. What you did was an act of self-defense. It was almost like him or me. I feel like we really had no choice. I don't think he wanted to roll the dice. Something happened in there. Do I believe him that it was self-defense? No, I don't. Really? A very sad and tragic accident between two very good friends. Alcohol being the common denominator in Ure being a victim as well because he has to live with it. So forgiveness has to be the best way forward. When you're close to somebody like that and then something crazy like that happens, whether he's trying to kill you or not, you know, it's still taking another person's life away from them. That's not a good feeling. It's awful. It's awful. Yeah. The thing about Chris that I'll never forget is just how incredibly talented he was. And it's a shame that that talent didn't lead to a longer and more fulfilled life. To me, it's just, just a sad story. I'll remember Chris Adams as a great wrestler in the ring, a great performer, a great athlete. But when it comes outside of the ring, when the alcohol would kick in, it was almost like he was looking for that edge of why he could get mad at you. And he was a person that once he realized he had an alcohol problem, he didn't choose to solve it. What a dichotomy. He had a great side and he had a terrible, ugly side that really outweighed the good. But I remember the good. I want my dad to be remembered as an amazing athlete who worked really hard and as a loving father to his kids because I think his kids were everything to him. Just wish he could be here to see how we all ended up. I think he'd be proud of us. I think he'd be proud of my brother particularly. One, two, three. There was so much more to my dad than just the wild, crazy party side. There is a reason why people called him the gentleman. There's a reason why my friends uh, over in England would always say he could sing the birds out of the trees. You know, he was, he was very charming. He was very loving. He was a kind father. I want people to remember him as that person, as not just gentleman Chris Adams, but as Chris Adams. He had a drug problem. Uh, I don't know. Terrible. Well, we asked, what did he put Brett versus Bulldog at SummerSlam? That was a great match, but, you know, Bulldog was completely intoxicated in that match. <laughs> if I was an Uncle Howdy group, which character would I want to be, Garrett says? Um, probably the Buzzards. Moxley asked, do you think Cody Rhodes is a transitional champ? Maybe. Because, you know, if, he, if he's going to be boring like that, I don't know how much we're going to, how how long we're going to have to keep him. You know, like, uh, there's there's got to be a lot more entertaining champions than Cody. Mike Harper, who I think wins the men's Money in the Bank this year, Sami Zayn. If I was a wrestler, would I sign an NDA, uh, Rory says. Um, depends what it's about.
Tamatonga. I honestly don't know who he is. And I don't know why he's on the main roster. He should have started in NXT. He was tripping over his own feet on when he debuted. Thoughts on Ivar and NXT again. I think Ivar is very underrated. And he deserves to be on the main roster, honestly. Should Philly host another WrestleMania? Uh, I'm sure they will host another WrestleMania. I won't be there because uh, I hate Philly. The food sucks. The weather was terrible. Um, I got s sicker than I've ever gotten in my whole life in Philly. Uh, yeah, Philly. I, I hate Philly. Sorry if you're from Philly, anyone. I just hate it. It's it's a, such a scuzzy town. And I'm I'm talking coming from New York. So sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, WWE should drop the PG era, especially when they move to Netflix. Linda, well, you know, Linda's entitled to her opinion, you know. Mike Harper says, Finn Balor, Mandy Rose, Apollo Crews, and Barrett Corbin all went back to NXT and had great runs. You're right about that, Mike Harper. You are right about that. Can you please not reveal answers or themes from now on? Well, I, I like to have a vote. So, you know, sometimes they want to know. Well, Sami Zayn, the last WrestleMania, he won the Intercontinental title. The WrestleMania before that, he won the tag belts. It's only fitting for him to win the world title next year's Mania. Cut a promo for you for your global belt. I will right, we'll see. Bloodline versus Bloodline 2.0 at Survivor Series. If they do Bloodline 2.0, that's going to be messed up. That's going to be like Shield 2.0. I hope they don't do that. Well, I'm, I'm not challenging you for the global title, so I don't know what, what kind of promo you want me to cut. But, uh, but you are the champ, Rory, and congratulations, bro. You have retired, officially retired at the very top. You can't go any further than where you've gone here on this channel. You have gone to the very top of the channel, winning the Global Trivia Championship title, nonetheless. No one's ever done that before. The official Global, physical Global Trivia Championship. I mean, no one's ever done that before, and you did that, Rory, so... Uh, you got to pat yourself on the back for that, man. And hey, who knows what's going to happen for next year's WrestleMania. But hey, uh, this year's WrestleMania, you, you're the very first ever to claim the physical Global Trivia Championship. And, uh, and you are the official king of the stream. Two likes. Well, that's... that's, uh, that's you guys should be putting likes on the stream. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Put some likes on the stream. Thank you. There's five of you guys. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, so you never know what's going to happen. But I will be back for SmackDown, guys, and I'll start revealing the prizes for Backlash on SmackDown. I hope you guys have a great night tonight. Uh, I hope you all be safe and be well, each and every one of you guys. And I'll catch you guys next time on the live stream. Have a great night, everybody. Mad Troy signing out. Be safe, be well, guys. It's so great to see you guys. And uh, I'll catch you guys for SmackDown, guys. Have a great night. Good night, Garrett. Be safe, be well. 
Oh, you sure, Roy? Yeah, I'll send you the tracking right after the stream. Yeah, I'll, I'll message you. You're right, Boxy. Yeah, you never know, bro. All right, guys, have a great night. Metroid signing out. Be safe, be well, guys.